Okay, we're going to have a little bit of um, fun now, mostly laughing at me. Um, we, we want to involve some of, the, some of the children, so I have one volunteer, Danae, is going to come up. Why don't you come up here, Danae? I need another three, I think another girl and, an, and some two boys who would like to come up here and help me with something. So let's look around. It's the, look at the front row. I'm not trying to ignore you. I'm just wanting to give the other children an opportunity. So we've got, we've got, we've got... Okay, Samara, you can be the other girl. And then do we have any other children who want to come up? It's not going to be a scary thing. It's just going to be... <laughs> Isaac, do you want to come up, Isaac? Do you want to be one of the boys to come and help? You can, you can come up with Dad if you want. And then we've got... Anybody? Stefan, do you want to come up and... Would you like to come up and help? All right, so we've got two boys, two girls. Okay, we had another boy over there. One of the Smithies boys, yep. Who have we got? Caleb. Okay, Caleb, come and conquer the promised land. Right. Well, thank you, children, for being up here to help. So we're talking about... Can any of you tell me what we're talking about this weekend? Crazy busy. Was it? Crazy busy. Crazy busy. Yep. How crazy busy things are. Yeah, we want to have what kind of a paced life have we talked about? Do you remember, Samara? A grace paced life. Race paced life. So there's a little analogy. Now, by analogy, we're talking about something visual that helps to cement or, or teach us a truth. And often we learn very much in a visual way. And so there's a, a little analogy here, a visual analogy that I found very helpful. And many of you have probably heard before, which we talk about big rocks. And so this is regarding the priorities in our lives. We've been talking about the importance of building our priorities or making our priorities God's priorities and building our lives around them. All of us can relate to what it's like at times, even children, when things get busy and this is the fact, you're probably going to be crazy busy today at a conference helping you with some, hopefully, tools to not be so crazy busy in your life. But hopefully the things you leave with will help that to be a reality in your life. But the fact is life is busy. But if our lives are constantly so busy that we can't ever put the spiritual priorities in place, then we and others suffer for that. So that's what we're encouraging. So there's a good way of illustrating this. So we talk about the big rocks and we have some medium rocks and we have some just little stones of pebble. So what I want to do is first I'll ask um, Danae, could you tip these into here for me? Now this could go, here we go, that's it, oh, there we go. Well done. You can put any of the other ones that you can find. So in our life, if we start with these little things, which could be like surfing the internet or maybe just playing some game or looking at some news article, it's just stuff. It's just kind of wasting, like laughing at videos on YouTube about cats and dogs and how many silly cat videos can you watch in your lifetime. You know, this is stuff that we often do heaps of, hours and hours. We don't realize how much time we spend doing that. We watch another one, we watch another one, we watch another one. I remember talking to my children, I showed them a YouTube clip the first time they'd seen YouTube. And on the right, they said, oh, look, Daddy, there's another one. Almost like, oh, look, there's some bonus ones on the side. And I had to explain to them, okay, children, you have to understand now. That will just go on for infinity. <laughs> there are millions and millions of things you can watch that want you to watch the next thing. So we often put that first. Maybe for us adults, we get up in the morning, we watch the news, another article, another article. We check Facebook and we scroll and we check Twitter and an hour goes by and we go, oh, I should be doing some other things like clean my teeth or have a shower. So there are other things or maybe some sports or maybe even watching a movie or maybe some good things like you know ch church meetings. Things are actually not wrong. And these are more of the sort of medium priorities. So, Samara, would you like to see if you can, you could probably pick up and put some of those in there so you get the whole tub in. These things are, are okay in themselves, and they should be in our life, but sometimes we put too many of the things in our life. It's not wrong to play sports, but maybe this is like every single day we're going back and forth. Or the homeschool activities, we know what it's like. We're going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, and we're so crazy busy that all we're doing is going from one appointment to the next. And then what happens is because we're busy, we're busy, we're busy, we're busy, we're so busy, we have the bigger priorities, the things of maybe time, quality time with family, quality time in God's Word, evangelism, time in the local church, spiritual priorities, things that matter. It could also be our health. 
It could also be getting decent sleep. It's, it's the important things that allow us to function fully in the race God has called us to. And these are the big priorities. And what happens, we try to fit them in after, and we're like, this is, it's just, it, I can't fit it in. You know what, I've been checking stuff. I don't have time to pray. I can't read my Bible. Uh, we, we can't really go to church this weekend because we've got too much on. And yeah, there was this thing on evangelism, but it's just not going to work. I just, can't, I just can't get the lid on my life. And we say, I'm just so busy. But we have created that. We are not victims. We're the cause of that. And that's why we can't fit it in. But there's a different way to approach things. And that's what we're talking about now. So if we think about it this way around, if we start with the priorities, and this is what we're encouraging people to think of, think of your week. When will you have family devotions? When do you set aside time for church? When do you set aside time for evangelism? For things that relate to your health? Quality time with family that's blocked out. You've already said yes to it, so you can say no if you need to other things. Those things we put in first. We want them to go in place. And then, Caleb, would you mind trying to get some of the smallest ones in here and pop them in? And so this is what it feels like when, before I check my email, before I scroll through Facebook, I'm going to spend some time in God's Word. And you know as well as I do that everything in you sometimes feels like, but there's probably an important email, or they call it the FOMO, fear of missing out, or what if if somebody liked my Facebook post I put on last night, I probably should just check that, but we never just check, do we? Just check leads to another just check because that's why the technology is designed. And watch this, watch this, this next, up next. And so you can keep going, Caleb, and you can put all of those in. And so if we put those things in place first, and, and this is something in my own life that I, I change because it's so easy with the phone using it as an alarm clock to wake up in the morning and go, well, better check. You know, after all, there's people in America I'm emailing and that would have come in overnight, just a quick check. Five minutes go by, 10 minutes go by. One of the kids needs you, and then it's like, oh, I haven't really got time to spend in God's Word. But when we put the priority in place, we get it in first. We establish, we build our lives around our time with family, our time family devotion, our time in church. And the great thing is there's then actually room to fit other things around. And it's a beautiful feeling to know we've had some great time today as a family in God's Word. So when we're watching a movie and laughing together or doing something just fun, we're not feeling this thing of, oh, I should, I should have done this or I should have done that. We can just relax. It's okay. It's not a matter of time. It doesn't mean that you're in sin because you go to work for eight hours, but you only read your Bible for half an hour. It's a matter of priority. So then what we have, and Stefan, you've got a very important job here. When the important things are in place, would you be able to get some handfuls of these stones and put them all in, in there? That would be great. When the important things are in place then there's actually time left over. There's margin for the things that are more trivial. They're not necessary, but they fit in on top of our lives. They're not the things that we start with. And so we sometimes think, okay, if I've got to put all these spiritual priorities in place, I'll never have time for doing this fun stuff. It's not that way at all. For a start, there is life in the things of God, and he's designed it that way. He doesn't want us to come to church with like big grumpy faces and go and share the gospel with big grumpy faces and read our Bible because we have to, because we're Christians. And remember, it's not a got to, it's a get to. But there is space and there is margin to enjoy the people that he's put in our life and enjoy the world that he's created us. And so... I remember the other day, you know, we had a, a busy day, we were doing things, but we, we felt like we got our priorities in place as a family, and we were going to sit down, and we were, going to, we were going to watch something together, and enjoy it, and have fun, and I said to the kids, you know what, this is great, we can just enjoy this, and have fun, because the other things are in place, we, we've shared time in God's word together, we know that evangelism has been part of our life, and we get it wrong, we don't always get our priorities right, but what I want to do is you to see this, thank you Stephen, perfect analogy, because it sticks in our minds, as you come from this conference, our encouragement in a visual form is this. Do whatever you need to do. Make whatever changes you need to make to step back and put the right priorities in first. And then you can get the lid on your jar of faith in your life. And you can have a life that is full 
absolutely. And you know, and I could get some water and I could keep pouring it in and it would be full to the brim. We want you to live full, full, busy lives, but within those full, busy lives, the important priorities are firmly in place. And you know what the result of that is? Not weariness or discouragement, but peace and contentment that you're actually living in the way that God has called you to. And when we mess it up, refer back Craig's last message, the gospel is there for us. So children, you have been wonderful. Now I have some gifts for you here. There's one for you, Danae. There's, I don't, I don't, you can swap these afterwards, I don't know. Caleb, there you go, there's some pencils for you. There's some connector pens for you, and there's some, there you go, fine liners for you. Let's give the kids a round of applause.